Shimano recently filed a patent for a 13-speed gearbox, and in this video, we're going to talk about why this is so awesome, how it works, how much it will likely weigh, and how efficient it could be. But first, a little on gearboxes. We've seen dozens of crankbase gearboxes over the years, but currently the pinion gearboxes are the standard to beat. However, let's not forget that internal gear hubs are gearboxes too, and the roll-off hub is the gold standard in terms of both efficiency and weight. The Shimano gearbox patent application actually reveals a huge amount of information about this gear system. It includes the gear ratios, the cog sizes, the lubricant ingredients, the shifting mechanism, the gearbox specific chain, suspension details, and more. This doesn't mean it'll ever see the light of day, but given the level of detail in this patent application, I'd confidently bet that this is much more than a concept. Okay, but why do we even like gearboxes? I can tell you because I've been traveling around the world on a bicycle with a gearbox hub for over 100,000 kilometers, and I absolutely love having a fully sealed gear system which is impervious to the mud, grit, dust, snow, and sand that I plow through. Even in horrific conditions, my bike requires almost zero maintenance and few replacement parts too. The gearbox hides all the usual delicate drivetrain components out of harm's way, and with the wide hub flanges, my rear wheel is built stronger than a cassette wheel too. For mountain bikers, a crank-based gearbox makes the most sense. By centralizing weight on the bike and reducing the unsprung mass at the rear wheel, you can improve the overall suspension performance. Let's get into some of the main talking points of Shimano's new gearbox. Number one, this gearbox is going to be big. The bulk of the Shimano gearbox is taken up by the opposing seven speed cassettes with 19 to 41 tooth cogs. Once I appropriately scale the gearbox onto a bike, you can see it will take up a heck of a lot of space. Number two, the gearbox will require a specially designed frame. With the large gearbox volume, it's going to need a different frame cabinet to anything currently available. But this likely won't be an issue as Shimano has enormous sway in the bike industry. You can see that Shimano expects the gearbox to be mounted inside a frame sleeve, which would also make the most sense structurally. Number three, there will be 13 gears that are unevenly spaced across a 470% range. The Shimano gearbox will have a high gear that's 4.7 times harder to push than its easiest gear. This is a smaller gear range than the roll-off hub, the pinion gearbox, and the current largest Shimano cassette. This simply means that the range of speeds at which you have the right gear ratio is reduced. Comparing the steps between each individual gear, the Shimano averages 12%, while the roll-off uses 13.6%, and the pinion 17.7%. That means, on average, each gear will feel closer together than other gearbox systems. However, unlike most gearbox systems, these steps are uneven throughout the gear range, making gear changes feel perhaps a little less predictable. Number four. The gearbox uses roller chains, not planetary gears, and not spur gears. Roller chains and cassettes are simple to produce and assemble, allowing for large-scale manufacturing at a low cost. This is undoubtedly the biggest advantage of the Shimano gearbox over the competition. Compare this with the roll-off hub, which has over 150 individual components and a resulting high price, and it's easy to understand why gearbox systems haven't made it to the mass market yet. Number five, there will be electronic shifting. The patent application talks about both electronic and mechanical shifting. Shimano has proven themselves very adept at the design and manufacturing of electronic components, so we can expect the execution to be flawless with both drop bar and flat bar shifters. Number six, this gearbox is not intended for e-bikes. Given there are relatively small steps between each gear ratio, plus the fact that the majority of electric bikes now use mid-mount motors, this gearbox has not been designed for e-bikes and the system has no room for motor integration either. That said, this doesn't mean you can't have a Shimano gearbox e-bike. The Go Swiss Drive rear hub motors are currently very popular amongst pinion gearbox e-bike manufacturers. Number seven, this gearbox could come soon. The patent application shows very advanced designs rather than just simplistic ideas. It's clear Shimano has been working on this for a while and I'm certain they have working prototypes hidden at Shimano headquarters. 
The challenge will be in working with the big bike manufacturers to roll these gearboxes out smoothly. Okay, so how does it work? It's actually quite simple and I can use regular drivetrain components to describe it. There are four key components here. A crankset, two cassettes, three chains and a derailleur type mechanism. Pedal power from the crankset is delivered to the first 7-speed cassette, transferred to the second 7-speed cassette and then sent to the rear wheel externally. The gears are changed using a derailleur mechanism located between the cassettes which will move diagonally along an angular shaft. The first cassette will move side to side but only the distance of one cassette cog. In the first gear, both cassettes are aligned and the chain will run from a 19 to a 41 tooth cog. For the second gear, the first cassette will shift over so that the chain can now couple with a 21 tooth cog on the first cassette and the same 41 tooth on the second cassette. For the third gear, both the derailleur mechanism and the cassette will shift across, resulting in a change to a 37 tooth on the second cassette. This three-step process will shift the chain all the way up to the drive side of the bike, resulting in the highest gear of 41 to 19 tooth. This gear system is pretty cool because the chain is always aligned, which maximizes drive efficiency. It also achieves 13 speeds within a very narrow gearbox width. Gear changes will not be instant like they are on a roll-off or pinion gearbox, but you will be able to shift under a load. The system will be running inside a sealed oil bath, ensuring maintenance and replacement parts are at a minimum. Okay, it's time to do some speculating, so let's start with the gearbox weight. But first, give this video a quick like, would you? A typical one by drivetrain hits the scales at 2.3 kilograms. When we add a 2 by front derailleur, another chain ring, and another shifter, this adds about 400 grams to the total. The lightest gearbox currently available is the Roll-Off, which weighs in at 3.1 kilograms, and the pinion is not much heavier at 3.3 kilograms. By adding up the approximate weights from the various drivetrain components required to build the Shimano gearbox, I've estimated it could be the same weight as the roll-off drivetrain and possibly lighter than the pinion too. But really, there won't be much separating all three. The only clincher is that frame cabinets for gearboxes definitely add weight to a bike frame, resulting in a heavier overall bike. Next up is the drive efficiency. Can this gearbox match the high rate of efficiency of a roll-off hub? I suspect not. Let's see, even when accounting for the straight chain lines, there could be as much as 3 watts lost on each chain, the derailleur pulley will lose about 1 watt, and there are a few extra sets of bearings at each of the transmissions. My napkin maths brings us to an 89% efficiency, which is significantly behind the 95-96% to 96% of derailleur drivetrains, the 94.5% set by the roll-off hub, and the 90.5% of a pinion gearbox. That said, as part of the same patent application, Shimano has written in length about lubricating agents. The graph they've included shows the friction coefficient could potentially be halved. In the patent application, Shimano has also shown a unique gearbox-specific chain design which is purposely sheared down to accumulate lubricant between the chain pins and the link plates. This should reduce friction for the two chains inside the gearbox. But even with these measures, I think you can expect only minor improvements to the drive efficiency. I'd suggest the best case would be efficiency numbers running into the low 90s, matching the pinion gearbox, but the roll-off benchmark of 94.5% seems unlikely. And lastly, will the Shimano gearbox be a game changer? Given that most components for this gearbox are already mature, that the gearbox will be relatively simple and cheap to manufacture, and that Shimano has some of the biggest pull within the bike industry, it's looking pretty damn likely that this gearbox will be a game changer if it arrives. I can see this system rolling out on urban and touring bikes that require low maintenance drivetrains, but equally it'll be great on mountain bikes that can benefit from the centralised weight and the reduced unsprung mass. Don't expect the Shimano gearbox to be as light or as efficient as a derailleur system though. It won't be, but it could fall somewhere between a pinion gearbox and the roll-off hub. Compared to a one by drivetrain, you can expect this gearbox to add more than one kilogram to your bike, but that won't matter when drivetrain maintenance becomes a thing of the past. Shimano, if you need somebody to test your gearbox on a bike ride across a continent or two, please get in touch because I'm your guy. And folks, if you're enjoying my tech content so far, please consider supporting this channel. 
More support allows me to free up more time to create more videos. It's that simple. Also, consider grabbing a book. There's the Bikepacking Bike Buyer's Guide, the Touring Bicycle Buyer's Guide, and Bicycle Touring in One Hour, which provides the how-tos of bike travel. Adios, amigos.